Hey everybody, this is Tracy here to recap the season finale of Issa Rae's Insecure, which was um, titled Broken as Fuck. And so it's after the big breakup between Lawrence and Issa and Lawrence isn't answering the phone and Ugh, you know, this is like the worst feeling in the world, you know, when things go sour and you feel helpless and hopeless and you think that, you know, everything would be right in the world again if he would just answer the phone. So desperate times call for desperate measures. And so what do we do next? We show up at their job, you know, it's neutral ground and they are less likely to go away the hell off because we're there, unlike if we show up at their house or their mama's house. But um, Issa goes to Lawrence's job and, you know, we see a side of Lawrence that if he had shown it earlier, you know, Issa um, may not have strayed. But Lawrence had so much bass in his voice that I wanted to turn off the TV um, when he started uh, yelling at her and telling her, you know, to stop calling him. You know, but it was the kind of sexy and like a caveman, you know, authoritarian, barbaric, you know, type of way. Um, but it may turn some people off, but I thought it was kind of sexy, you know, to see uh, Lawrence finally taking charge and taking control. So Issa's at work and she's totally distracted. You know, her co-workers going on and on and on babbling about they haven't gotten the chair deposit back or something. And so um, Issa is supposed to be calling the donors, you know, tell them thank you for contributing to the um, fundraiser and so the last person on Issa's list is Molly so she finally you know gets up her courage and calls Molly and you know she's trying to act like you know everything is cool but Molly isn't giving her the time of day and she's like I'm not letting you off that easy and I'm like oh Molly you know Issa really needs you right now and what could be worse than losing your boyfriend but losing your best friend that now you can't call and tell her everything that happened. So it's like, who does Issa have to talk to at this moment, you know, when she's going through one of the most traumatic experiences of her life. So Issa, Molly, Tiffany, and Kelly, I think is the other friend's name. Um, they're headed to Malibu to celebrate Kelly's birthday. And it was kind of awkward, you know, riding in the car because Tiffany and Kelly, you know, they're in the front and they're dancing to some rap song that was on. And so then, you know, Issa, you know, she starts grooving with them, but Molly's sitting there like, I'm not having it. And so Issa, you know, she tries her best, you know, to like get Molly, you know, to talk to her, or at least be cordial to her. But, you know, Molly is like totally pissed off with Issa right now. It's a really nice house that they're going to be staying in. It has a lot of amenities, but Molly is not having it. She is, I don't care what Issa tries to do, you know, what joke Issa makes. Um, Molly, you know, she's being kind of cold and Issa goes and sits on the arm of the chair that Molly's sitting in. And so I think Tiffany said that there were um, two bedrooms downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs. And she was taking one of the upstairs bedrooms. And I guess Issa was thinking, okay, well, me and Molly will take the downstairs bedroom. But before she could say anything, Molly hopped up out that chair and um, told Tiffany, you know, she would take the other upstairs bedroom also. So later on, the ladies head to the bar and, you know, hopefully some alcohol um, is what they need to kind of, um, you know, lighten the mood and get Molly and Issa back talking to each other. So back, um, do they live in Inglewood? I can't think of what part of California that um, Issa and Lawrence live in. But anyway, Lawrence is staying with his friend Chad, you know, and they're talking, drinking beer and sharing a joint, you know, and they're just talking about relationships and life. And so, you know, Lawrence lets him know that, um, you know, he was really upset about the breakup because like a week or two earlier, you know, he had actually decided to propose to Issa. And so, you know, his friend tells him that, you know, everything's going to be okay because, you know, Lawrence is a different type of guy. So, um, Chad says something to Lawrence about, you know, my heart, um, uh, pumps cold, you know, but Lawrence, you know, you are an R&B singing your feelings type of guy, you know, and he tells Lawrence that, you know, it's nothing to be ashamed of. And, um, you know, that he thinks that him and, um, Issa, will work things out but then Lawrence is like man forget that call the guys up and you know and let's go clubbing so I guess he's ready to um, get his party on and um enjoy his newfound freedom so back in um Malibu Issa you know she hasn't told anyone that her and Lawrence have broken up and um she can't stop looking at her phone and so 
they're at the club and you know they're dancing and they were playing some game and I can't remember the name of it but it was sort of like a truth and dare type game where you know somebody tells you to do something and then you have to do it and so um, after they play the game you know Molly and Kelly you know they're really feeling the night and so they go out on the dance floor and they're dancing with these little young college boys and so Molly this boy looked like he couldn't have been no more. I mean, if he was in college, he was a freshman in college. And so Molly, you know, she's just kissing and slobbing the boy down on the dance floor. You know, and each of them were looking at her like, oh my God, I can't believe she's doing this. And so uh, when Molly prepares to leave with the little boy, you know, Issa calls her out and, you know, but Molly's still in her feelings and she pretty much tells Issa, you know, to mind her own business. And so she um, takes the little boy back to the house and screws his brains out. I don't think that little boy knew what happened to him. Molly didn't even let him take all his clothes off. I think he was, um, he had pulled his pants down and they were down to his ankle and she just threw him back on the bed. She still had her clothes on and she just got on top of that little boy and was like riding him out. And you know he was a little boy because before they started screwing, he was like, so what do I do? Do I turn some music on? And then he tells Molly, you know, he still has a week left on his um, title subscription. So Molly really needs to be ashamed of herself. <laughs> so after um, Molly and the little boy, you know, finish screwing, um, Issa's in the kitchen and she looks up and Molly's walking him out, you know, walking him to the door. So when Molly comes back in, she like gives Issa a look like I'm a grown woman. I do what I want and I dare you to say anything to me. And she turns and heads back on upstairs and goes back to bed. And so, you know, later that morning, um, Issa, you know, she's trying to uh, tell Kelly, you know, that things aren't good between her and Lawrence, but Kelly, you know, she's all in left field and she's like, you know, did Lawrence hit you? Did Lawrence do this? Did Lawrence do that? And she doesn't let Issa um, finish her thought and tell her what, you know, happened between her and Lawrence. And so when Issa tells her, you know, no, he didn't hit me and he didn't um, steal from me or whatever Kelly was suggesting, you know, then she was like, so why you got me all about feelings, got me all upset. And then Issa, you know, she just gives up trying to tell her what happened. So later they all are supposed to go to a vineyard for a wine tasting, you know, but Kelly, you know, she still has her hangover and she doesn't go. So when Issa walks up, Tiffany and Molly, so I guess Tiffany and Molly are kind of bougie and then Issa and Kelly, you know, they're all home girl, down the earth type girls. And so, you know, Tiffany and Molly, you know, they're being all stuck up and everything and then they told the lady that the wine tasted like, um, I think one of them said it tasted like wood and the other one said she could taste something else in the wine. And then Issa was like, okay, well, I just taste wine, you know, so they rolled their eyes at her. So back with um, Lawrence, <laughs> back in hometown, you know, Lawrence and his friends, they um, have gone to a strip joint and they're, you know, all in on black women and how hard we are to um, get along with and you know we want everything our way we want to control the relationship so you guys know the routine and so um they let lawrence know you know he's going to be prime out on the market and he's going to be able to get any woman that he wants and the women are going to be throwing the coochie at him you know so just be patient but lawrence has become like mesmerized with one of the strippers which i I could understand, you know, since she was up there with no top, no tassels or nothing on the girls. And then she was just spreading her legs with all the coochie just there for the taking. And so he decides to pay for a um, private dance in the champagne room. <laughs> and so, you know, she's just grinding on him. She done went all down in his pants. And so Lawrence had, I think he slapped her on the butt. And then he was like, oh, you know, I wasn't supposed to do that. And, you know, she tells him he could do whatever he wants. So then he just grabs her behind. He just grabs it and squeezes it. And so she tells him that, you know, the bouncer is cool and whatever, you know, he wants to do, he can do. And so I guess Lawrence thought he was going to get him some for whatever he paid for that private dance. But old girl told him it was $200 for some head. And it was $400 if he wanted to screw her. And so I think that was a wake-up call for Lawrence. And he realizes that, dang, I've been in a relationship for all these years. And it was always there for the taking. And so, you know, I'm not going to pay for it because um, he looked at homegirl like, uh, thanks, but no thanks. So back in Malibu, the ladies, um, it's later that day. And they are in the hot tub. 
and the conversation goes to Molly and her whorism. And so Tiffany and Kelly, you know, they're throwing shade at Molly and saying the new Molly um, is just like the old Molly, except she chooses to let men screw her and then walk out of her life. And so you can tell that Molly, you know, her feelings are hurt. And so um, Issa, you know, she can also tell that Molly, you know, is hurt. And so she comes to her defense, you know, by going off on Kelly and Tiffany. So then Tiffany, to get back at Issa, brings up that she knows that Issa um, cheated on Lawrence and that Lawrence left her. So Molly is shocked and, you know, she's like, oh my God, he found out about Daniel. And Kelly is like, oh my God, you had sex with Daniel? You know, so she wants all the details. So they're all just talking and carrying on. And so divine intervention, <laughs> um, Issa's phone starts buzzing and it is Lawrence. And so, you know, she jumps out of the hot tub and goes into the bedroom. And so they have this like really awkward, you know, we're missing each other type conversation. And so, you know, just like nobody knows what to say, but they're just happy, you know, that somebody finally, you know, that, well, not somebody. Issa's happy that Lawrence has finally called her. And so she um, lets him know that, you know, she's away for the weekend and won't be back until Monday, I think she said. And she tells him that, you know, he can go and stay at the apartment until she returns. And then, you know, they both say, you know, that they really miss each other and they agree to talk when Issa gets back home. But I think um, Lawrence meant on Monday when she got home, but uh, Issa was like, mm -mm, he's going to that apartment, so I'm going to be there when he gets there. So she goes out and she tells um, the girls that she has to leave immediately. And so they were looking at her like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. Um, how are you going to get there? You know, So she was going to call the Uber. And then Molly walks in and she's stolen um, Kelly. Kelly, or, no, I think it was Tiffany. She's stolen Tiffany's keys and, um, you know, she agrees to take Issa home. And so, you know, when they get in the car, uh, Molly's like, okay, you know, well, practice on me. And then whatever Issa said, you know, Molly just like jumped at her. And Issa was like, oh my God. And so she says, well, I'm just playing. And so, you know, come on, do it again. And then whatever Issa said, it sounded more like she was apologizing to Molly than she was to Lawrence. And so I guess it was her way of saying that she was sorry and that she really um, wanted Molly back in her life. And then, you know, she did break down and ask Molly, you know, were they friends again? And Molly was like, it's two o'clock in the morning and we on the PCH. Hell yeah, we, friend we still friends. So after that, you know, Molly admits that she is a mess and that, um, you know, she really needs to get better and do better in her life. And so, you know, it was happy to see that they had gotten back together. Because like I said earlier, nothing worse than breaking up with your man and you're mad with your friend. And you don't have that person, you know, that you can um, tell all your troubles to. So Lawrence gets back um, to the apartment. And can y'all believe that that doggone couch is still sitting out on that curb? And at this point, it's turned into community property because there was a group of guys, you know, sitting on the... Um, couch and on the back wall and everything, you know, they were drinking and talking. Oh, and one other thing, um, I really, I don't think I've said this in a previous video, but I really like the setting of Issa and Lawrence's apartment. You know, it's just like really down to earth and normal looking, you know, nothing fancy. It just looks like an apartment that you could go to that any of your friends live in or that you may live in. And so, um, you know, just want to throw that in there. So um, Issa arrives and she rushes in and so she lays her keys um, next to Lawrence's keys. They were on the counter when you first came in the house. And so, you know, she walks through the house looking for him, but Lawrence isn't there. And by the looks of things, um, he ain't never coming home no more. And so all he left for Miss Issa was his Best Buy polo shirt. And I was like, oh, that was sad. So, you know, he's just heartbroken, but um, Lawrence isn't because we go to um, Tasha's place. Remember Tasha, the bank teller? Yeah, honey, let me tell you that Lawrence is over there trying to break her back. Can we say face down, ass up, way we like to... Oh, wait. No more two live crew. So that was 30 years ago. Let me, let me, 
for the church folks come in and say, girl, what is you doing? So uh, poor Issa, you know, she's out outside on that raggedy uh, couch in a state of shock. And, you know, how could Lawrence do her like that? So Molly comes back and she has a bottle of champagne and she sits down next to Issa on that dirty, disgusting, nasty couch. And so, you know, she gives Issa the champagne and Issa looks at it. And then she just balls up and lays down on, um, lays her head on Molly's lap and she just starts crying and that's how the show ended and so dang you know I really feel sorry for Issa you know but I'm not sorry that this relationship ended because it was boring and heading nowhere fast and so I think that um, Lawrence needs him a woman like Tasha so you know I hope in season two him and Tasha you know there's like some interaction between Tasha and Issa and um, I think that Issa needs not to turn into a Molly you know in her search for happiness and I hate that the season was only um, eight weeks because I need so much more of this show. And um, I think that um, I was thinking Insecure is like being Mary Jane about five years, Mary Jane five years younger. What do you guys think? So, well, that's it for me. Um, what do you all think about Issa and Lawrence's breakup? And was it time or do you um, have hope for them in season two? So leave your comments below, rate the video, and um, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I think I'm at um, 76 subscribers, so I only need 24 more before I can uh, personalize my URL. And so that's my immediate goal right now is doing that. And so I'll be reviewing the season finale of Queen Sugar on Thursday, so come back. And um, in the meantime, check out my other reviews. So, until next time, bye-bye.